Now introducing Google Minus. It's just like Google Plus, but without everything that you didn't want in it, which is everything. This is Control Structure, episode 149 for October 10th, 2018. Big week to all the Google Minus users. This show has notes. Visit thenexus.tv slash cs149 to see them. Uh, I am your host, uh, Andrew Bailey, and with, the, uh, with you today is the other host, Stephen Orvis. Hi, Andrew. Hey, Steve. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Uh... You know, just just had to deal with Chris, but uh, I think I think we'll be okay. We survived. Yeah, just barely. Raspberry. 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 <laughs> well, you do have neighbors now. True, but um. So, have you ever wished that your Raspberry Pi could be connected with all the other Raspberry Pis in the neighborhood? I'm not sure if there are any other Raspberry Pis in the neighborhood. Oh, okay. But I would like to find out. <laughs> so, uh, they have a new thing called... Let me get the official name here. Eotlora. Eotlora, sure. That's right, so Amazon... Currently, there's a video on that news article. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, there's this new header board that they have. Uh, there's a Kickstarter for it. And it's one of two things. There's either a... Uh, node or a gateway uh, and then uh, what it is is it allows it to connect uh, through this wireless technology up to 15 kilometers uh, to the gateway. Uh, the gateway is able to service I believe a few hundred nodes they say but it's all low uh, low data communication so it's not high low bandwidth. bandwidth. Low bandwidth, yeah. there you go. Uh, but they can go for a long way so that means you could conceivably have all of your I don't know if it do, if it's enough for bit pictures. If it is, you could maybe have all of your trial cameras out in the woods hooked up to pies and transmit them all back to your house so you can hunt from the comfort of your living room. And then when the deer comes by, you just know where to run out. I don't know, something <laughs> like that. Uh, Sounds good to me. Yeah, but I thought that was kind of cool. They're kind of expensive though. I think to get the full set, like node and gateway, is going to cost you like a couple hundred or something like that. Oh yeah, so that's I imagine a bit of a killer. I get the sense that they are hoping that over the UK they can get enough gateways out there that they can cover the island in uh, access and then uh, they can have a bunch of nodes connected up to it. But interesting concept though and I definitely see how it would be useful in bigger settings because 15 kilometers is if you want something locally like just thinking like on my farm things that you could put like that would cover any place on the property with lots of room to spare. Uh, so I could see useful things for that. Let's go <coughs> tag all the animals and find out where they're at. Uh, and the fence. And the fence, yeah. It's like stay inside the fence every ride. <laughs> well, like that charge controller so you'll know like when something's getting zapped. Oh, I see. Um, so so uh, did you see your horse yet uh, touching the fence? I didn't see the horse touching the fence. I did notice that he's significantly more careful of the fence now. <laughs> Now that we got the new charge controller, like he respects it a lot more now. I, <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, I did see the pigs eating his abs, and it kind of seems like it hurts, and they definitely respect the fence now, too. <laughs> so it's good. It means that they stay where they're supposed to stay and don't go get hit in the road by a car. So it's a good thing for them in the end. Uh, so, uh, well, you saying the end. Uh, how about a new beginning uh, with Java 11? So the next version of like the JDK and like everything has been out now for like a week or two. Uh, so this is like on the like rapid release, mm -hmm. uh, idea now. So, uh, uh, one of the two features I picked out here, uh, kind of important, uh, TLS 1.3 support and a standard HTTP client. So was it, it says new standard HTTP library, so I'm assuming it had an older one. It just didn't support the newer HTTP standards. Maybe, but pretty much everyone just used the Apache uh, client. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and then supports the new TLS uh, 1.3. You know, I'm not exactly sure. It's not just encryption, but like security protocol standard thing. So, uh, hopefully. Uh, other things in the ecosystem will support that now. 
uh, like browsers. So um, I guess we're, well, this is sort of tech related, but um, since we don't have a gaming show going these days, uh, we can talk about Telltale, uh, which uh, was which was a game development studio thing that uh, released lots of episodic games, like a lot of episodic adventure type games. So, uh, like they've released like so many series. In fact, uh, let me pull up Steam so I can uh, give you a full lowdown. Uh, they were seemed like they were founded by like the old LucasArts people because uh, they pretty much got the Sam and Max uh, licenses right away. Uh, they got their probably most famous for The Walking Dead, which was like their runaway hit like about five-ish years ago. Uh, they did Minecraft story mode. How did they, they, how do they use Minecraft? I thought Microsoft done them. They did a licensing deal, I think, before they got bought out. Oh, okay. Uh, and, you know, they've done, you know, comic uh, strips like Batman. Uh, let's see. They've also done a Game of Thrones game. They've done the Borderlands uh, adventure game, and The Wolf Among Us. That was the other sort of comic-ish thing. Uh, they did Poker Night at the Inventory. Uh, so yeah, they did the Strong Bad adventure games. I've so, heard of Monkey Island. Yeah, that w- I'm pretty sure that was like another LucasArts game from back okay. in the day. Remind me of LucasArts. Like it's vaguely familiar. Uh, Star Wars. Star Wars. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, Sam and Max, all those. So yeah, it turns out that I have lots of these thanks to a Humble Bundle. So it turns out that their management wasn't exactly that great, uh, which, you know, led them to keep on doing more and more and more projects, uh, at once, which thus led to pretty much eternal crunch time, you know, when things are, you know, have deadlines mm-hmm. and they're approaching and you need to like meet those deadlines. So when you have deadlines all the time, well, you're pretty much dead. <laughs> uh, to say the least. It seemed like they just reading their article that they were saying that they thought they didn't pay them people the right, but then they were in a really expensive area of town and well, in perhaps the most expensive area on earth, that is the San Francisco Bay area. So yeah, it's, <laughs> this is like kind of like in general, I think that, um, you know, since we're here in the Rust Belt, um, it'll be, well, maybe might be fun to see everything on the coast just suddenly have a economic collapse when everyone just puts their foot down and says, no, we're not paying more for this stuff. So, yeah, I guess uh, Telltale is uh, one of the first to go, well... One of the first... I think this has been going on for a while, but yeah, stay tuned. Looks like they made the LucasArts made some cool-looking uh, sim- play simulation games. At least the, the clip art and the titles sound really cool. Of course, so that's kind of normal with games. X-Wing. I've played X-Wing. Yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah, like there was like lots of flight simulators that they made, like actually in Star Wars. Okay. So I was just looking to see what games I recognize them because I, I felt like I should know them, but not Star Wars wasn't what I thought I should know them for. So, but they look like a really really old uh, company. Yeah, the Monkey Island I knew not because I played it, just I don't know whether we've talked about it or someone else has told me about it. So um, maybe interesting. So, anyways, uh, remember DuckDuckGo? You know our favorite search engine. Yes, I use it on my phone. Uh, so DuckDuckGo has had a public traffic graph going. And uh, you'll see this was just recently brought to my attention here. And you can see this hockey stick keeps on getting steeper. It's essentially a exponential growth happening here. So like you, you uh, asked, like, what's a hockey stick graph? I was asking what what caused the hockey stick, because oftentimes with hockey sticks, there's a cause. In this case, it seems more just gradual growth, like there's just different events in their favor. So uh, back uh, when uh, Mr. Snowden said that everyone 
like the, that the uh, you know the government was spying on everyone. Uh, that's when people really started using it. Uh, so that's when I started using Duck 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 Go, and uh, you know later on, you know it's like, hey, this is actually kind of good. So went ahead and uh, you know started using it more for everything. So uh, another search company, Yahoo. You know what they had? Um, Yahoo, the GeoCities, the the way 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 back when. I wanted to have a website, and so I was trying to find free web hosting. I believe GeoCities was one of the ones, but there's something like they're too addy or something. Like you had your web page, and they're like big banner ad there. I'm like, that's not very fun. Yeah. So uh, GeoCities was shut down back in 2009. So why are we talking about it? Because it was everywhere except Japan, and. Now we know the last GeoCity will close next March. It's very interesting that it's survived that well in Japan. Well, Japan has a very strange uh, relationship with technology. You know, like, you know, they're generally known for being like this, you know, futurist, you know, kind of place like that, uh, you know, everyone can just nerd out about because, you know, like the future happens first in Japan because it's like all oh, so advanced. Well, turns out that they that they really like to hold on to their tech. Uh, like, there's still fax machines being used a lot over there. Uh, really? Yeah, like, like all sorts of obsolete stuff, like, in other parts of the world are still used in Japan alongside this, like, really new fangled stuff. It's, it's really weird. That's interesting that they do that. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, with the rest of the world... They do move on, and now GeoCities is closing there, too. Hmm. But um, the rest of us have NeoCities, which has been around for a good five years or so, um, without the banner ads. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the with all these sites closing, a lot there's going to be more broken links around the internet. So, uh, what do you do for that? Well, there's the... Uh, Internet Archive Wayback Machine, and it has uh, there is apparently a bot going around on Wikipedia that is changing links from like dead links that don't go anywhere to the same link on the Wayback Machine. So there's actually something there. So like the information isn't exactly lost or you know whatever. I thought that was a pretty cool use of the uh, Wayback Machine and bots just to automate that process. I was just thinking that the only slight problem is pages change over time too. So you're almost be better off that on page save, uh, the bot just automatically goes through and grabs a way back copy for that point in time when the page was saved. So you would have the snapshot of the information the person referenced because even information can change. True. So I'm, I'm, I didn't remember, maybe it, uh, maybe it, detects when a link gets inserted into an article but that would be the ideal one yeah so uh let's see i'm not exactly sure how to you know go from there into this remember wi-fi wi-fi what's that well it's that alphabet soup of 802.11 whatever there was like a then there was b, b then they skipped c. to then they skipped to <laughs> g and then n, n. And then AC and now AX. Uh, so they, the Wi-Fi marketing people have decided, won't we just clear all this up and just say Wi-Fi 4 for the N, uh, 5 for AC, and 6 for AX. That would make life a lot easier to know which ones are better. Well, yeah, you know, uh, maybe like there's a standard that, uh, you know, is like sort of like a, optimizes for very short range uh transmission which i think ac might have done uh but you know you can tell people it's like oh yeah i have wi-fi 4 like what are you poor <laughs> <laughs> uh which uh, simplifies things a lot unlike the mess that usb has become we you, you haven't seen what usb has become <laughs> i just have 3.0 that's all i know well, don't or, they have or, 3.1 now or two or, or, or do you mean 
USB 3.1 Gen 1. Oh, see, I haven't, I haven't gotten to that mess because I haven't bought a computer for so long. <laughs> three's, three's like the latest and greatest for me. So, and then there's all sorts of you know features layered on top. It's like, does this plug support charging? Does this plug support a monitor attached to it, uh, and so forth? Uh, it's a, it's become a confusing mix of features that um, you're not even sure if the cable will work for what you want it to work for. <laughs> And oh yeah, just because it's a Type C plug does not mean that it's USB three. Well, the blue ones were three. Well, that they did right. Well, I mean like the cable, not well, the plug. The, the end, the end should always be blue. Well, no, like if you have a cable, like a wire uh-huh. with a plug on the end, those aren't really blue. I always thought they were. The like the plastic inside the port itself is. Mm-hmm. I thought the cables had blue in them too. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, Maybe okay. My my USB. I thought my... There you go. You have blue inside there. Well, yeah, but this is like an older A-type cable. Oh, okay. So, but yeah, like on this side, well, you can sort of tell it's a USB 3 since it has that extra bit on the Mm -hmm. end, but uh, see, I thought I had a USB-C cable around, but um, yeah, like they're pretty small. Okay. They're almost the size of this. They... Oh, the C that the phone does. Yeah, like that. Mm Mm-hmm. You can't really tell what color that is if it was colored. I've never seen a phone one colored, so. Anyways, so Bloomberg has uh, come out with a report that uh, says that China has pretty much hacked a lot of servers. And what I mean by hacked, ha- they have embedded a tiny chip that uh, essentially phones home. And uh, this this has been like embedded into like supply chain uh, supply chains essentially by like a government official coming to a factory saying you need to put this in or else, um, and that's you know how they say get into servers from say Supermicro, uh, which then get distributed out to say a video encoding company that sells. Uh, like the specialized encoding servers to people like Apple, Amazon, uh, the Department of Defense, the Navy, the CIA, you know, to process all that drone footage. (laughs) So, like, these things can uh, handle very sensitive material, uh, which you would want to bet that the Chinese government would like to get their hands on, uh, along with other kind of classified information. So... Uh, like the downside is no one else really makes computers anymore. So, uh, of course, pretty much all the companies involved officially deny all of these uh, allegations that, uh, you know, that this article says like, oh, yeah, Apple found these back in 2015. But t- today they're like, what are you talking about? Nothing like that happened. Uh, same with uh, Amazon. Uh In fact, Apple is so uh, vehemently denying this that they wrote a letter to Congress about it. Um, So just saying that, you know, we've never, you know, we've, we're always scanning our network looking for suspicious traffic and we've never, you know, come across anything that indicated uh, anything like this. So that's the thing is technically you you should be able to scan the network and see traffic because it's not magic when it phones home, it has to make traffic. Yeah. So upon seeing this article, a security researcher uh, uh, contacted uh, Bloomberg, which was the you know the publisher that you know uh, uh, pub- that you know published this mm-hmm. article. For the lack of a better, why did I stumble there? I don't know. Maybe I wanted to be creative. There you go. <laughs> anyway, he contacted Bloomberg, and you know just to give them more uh, material on this. And he says that he's working for a major U.S. Uh, telecommunications company. He can't say exactly which one because he's under an NDA. And he can confirm that, yes, these things are real. In fact, he's found a slightly different uh, chip in what, like, essentially he said, like an Ethernet uh, port. Mm. Uh, he says that, you know... You know, these ports are, you know, kind of strange because they're covered in metal rather than the usual plastic. Like, 
didn't all Ethernet plugs come like that? Like, you've seen motherboards, how, like, they have, like, metal casings around the port. Yeah, that's, like, just a little bit of the metal box around it. Yeah, uh, because apparently there is a chip inside there that generates so much heat that it needs that metal to dissipate the heat mm. that builds up. So, I mean, if it's, like, hidden under that little shield, then, you know, who would know that what's in there? And, in fact, the uh, original article, uh, you know, said that, you know, like, they're so small that they fit inside the layers on the PCB itself. So that, like, if you're... She's like, not really going to see it. Yeah. Like, you would kind of need to x-ray the thing to know that it was there. So is that why we should all use Raspberry Pi since it's open hardware? <laughs> In theory. So, um, maybe we can just use uh, different machines altogether. Uh, so, uh, over, the, well, over the past few shows we've mentioned, uh, was it, uh, Raptor Computing, which is trying to, uh, build, uh, systems around the Power 9 CPUs, like IBM CPUs, mm -hmm. rather than Intel or AMD type systems. Uh, they've announced a micro ATX board, uh, will be coming soon. So, yeah, if that happens... Um, that would be, that would kind of spell a different uh, future for, you know, these kinds of machines. So there's, uh, uh, in IBM processors, typically server processors. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like sort of, I guess you would call them big iron. Like they're not just like your normal yeah. PC type servers. Like these are like kind of specialized. They're, you know, mostly used by like you know, banks and, like, other sci hmm. science uh, labs and whatnot. So you still have to get over the hurdle of buying the processor, but the board at least is cheap. Um, well, the whole thing is is to, like, commoditize it. Oh, so that they could sell them. Yeah. And if so, they have older lines or something that don't sell as well. Well, I think a, the Power 9 is, like, fairly recent. Okay. But, like, the thing is, like, uh, like they've always been in these you know, machines that are like $100,000. Yeah. And like, that's like an entire cabinet mm -hmm. of machines rather than like, you know, something I can chuck into yeah. a case, you know, for my own stuff, which, uh, let's see, I think, I think we mentioned, uh, like a, it's like a sort of like a desktop type system from them was like maybe two. Oh, we took with the developer machines. We yeah. Remember that. Yeah. It was like three yeah. or four thousand dollars or so. so they'd have a different architecture than probably too would they maybe but like the cpu would be the most important part to it i'd say like it wouldn't have like the fancy hard drives or anything yeah uh or like network interfaces but like if you can you know get say a web server running or like a database server running on that like you're pretty much most of the way there at that point mm -hmm. so and like of course you you know Linux is compatible with these things so yep long live Linux <laughs> so um, we were talking about uh, Google Plus there Google minus Google minus uh, because uh, apparently Google discovered a vulnerability in Google Plus uh, that allowed uh, like through their API allowed access to things that should have been private to the user like things that the user marked private, but was uh, getting out through the API anyway. So, you know, uh, they, you know, allegedly focusing on privacy, they only had access logs running for the past two weeks on everything. Ha! Huh? Oh, okay, so when they say that they've known about this since March, and they say that they don't think that anyone has accessed the system, they mean to say that no one's no one's done it in the past two weeks. Even though it's been open since March, and they knew it. Yeah. Well, they. I think. Uh, let's see. When do they fix this? Uh, so something about March, they discovered it or fixed it or whatever. Um, but um, they only publicly came out about it now because you know what they're doing. They do what Google always does to things. They kill it. Yeah. Everything is beta or dead. <laughs> yep. So Google Plus ain't in beta, so they're killing it. That's how that works. Uh, of course, uh, the suspicious part is they say for consumers, 
the rumor mm-hmm. is that they'll still keep it for internal purposes. It was mentioning some place in their how for enterprise, how it's actually not a bad tool in that case, because they can set enterprise-wide standards on it and such. I've never found enterprise social media that useful. We tried Yammer once briefly, like, there was a couple people who were interested in it, but I was like, why do I want social media Facebook for work? I don't know why. Isn't that kind of what LinkedIn is for? No, it's, like, different. So imagine Facebook, but Facebook as in, hey, I'm starting a new project, and I'm doing this research, guys, and I put it on my wall, and people would comment, like, hey, you should check out this link over here, and, and someone posted this video over here that's useful, and, like, imagine social media for at-work stuff. Huh. Uh, that's what the vision was. I didn't quite get that <laughs> excitement about it, though. So, um... Talking about mistakes and bugs, uh, how about when I talk about Windows 10? Uh, they were supposed to be rolling out an update to Windows 10 about now, and they actually started, uh, but then they stopped it because they realized that uh, this update was deleting people's files. Why is that I don't think this is the first time Windows has done this? Um, because Windows has been a thing for like... Mm, almost 35 years. I'm pretty sure there... I remember something with XP or ME or something back there. There's an update that did something like this. So uh, suddenly uh, people wake up in the morning and start using their computers and um, things aren't the way they were. So, uh, you know, Microsoft has stopped, you know, pushing out the update and they're trying to figure out what's going wrong. So maybe when I update, files won't be... Won't, will not be gone. Or upload the podcast first. Yes. Anyways, I haven't updated Windows 10 for a very long time, so I'm safe. Yeah, because you don't use Windows 10. That's correct. It's on the partition. I could technically do a do it, but I haven't for <laughs> probably a year or so. I don't know. Something like that. Awesome. So, uh, don't forget that you can contact us on Google Minus. <laughs> 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 nope. Uh, yeah, Pretty much uh, no one has used Google Plus in a long time. Uh, like, even even uh, Buckface and uh, Studio Guy, like, back in the day, yeah, they were all on Google Plus, but they haven't used it in, like, a year. So, take that. Uh, but seriously, you can submit uh, feedback to us on Reddit, uh, or you can uh, go ahead and... I think we still have that link on the, uh, the podcast show notes page. Uh, and don't forget that today is International Backup Awareness Day, so back up all your stuff before Windows eats it. There you go. All right. So, uh, doing anything exciting? Uh, lately the most exciting thing I've done is teaching the, the, the pigs how to eat black walnuts. It's actually kind of working. You take a hammer, you crunch the black walnut just a bit, and you throw it in with the rest of their feed. And then after they eat the rest of the feed, they kind of maybe a little bit eat at the black walnut. So you kind of crunch, 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 and they sometimes eat it down. So it's kind of funny. Maybe someday they'll eat black walnuts without having to ham- hammer them first. <laughs> so yeah, that's my, my exciting thing. Hmm. So, let's see. Uh, I don't have any critter experience like you have. <laughs> like I... I don't think I've uh, seen any turkeys around here recently. Well, it'll be turkey season soon. I think beginning of November, sometime in then. Yeah. Uh, with your, uh, was it your musket? Or your front loader, or something. The muzzle loader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that will be deer season will be, I think, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday, I believe. Uh, speaking of which, I will be over at the Circleville Pumpkin Show. Is that the one where they launch the pumpkins? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Some place somewhere, there's a place where they have like this big old junk car out in the field, and they have this giant pumpkin launcher, and then they shoot like you know, however many hundred pound pumpkins at the car in the field. I always thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, this this city doesn't have enough open space for that. Oh, okay. Like it's just like a downtown, small town kind of thing. So, um, yeah. So, let's see. Yeah, I've been, uh, you know, doing a few tweaks to my blog. I finally got around to uh, finishing Riven, uh, the sequel to Mist, 
Mm. Um, so yeah, I'll probably be going through the other Mist games pretty soon. Mist is the one with the books that you open and go from between worlds. Yes. Okay. Got that one right. <laughs> Did you play that one? No. Okay. I just heard about it. <laughs> I think there's something in Minecraft, I forget it was the Nether or something, I heard someone saying it was kind of based off of Mist. Oh, there's a Minecraft plugin for it. And you can kind of go between these worlds and stuff. That's what it was. That's where I heard of it from. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's kind of neat conceptually that, you know, people say that it's like, oh, like I've been reading this book and I've been trained, you know, I was transported to there and I felt like I was actually living in this world. And, like, in this game, you open up a book and you actually go there. Uh, anyways, guess that's it. So have a good one. You too. You too.